Okay, so uh, what I want to show you today is a quick tutorial on my workflow <clears throat> on getting a better stabilization uh, with the Warp Stabilizer in Premiere Pro um, without having to use any third-party add-ons, add getting the job done efficiently and quicker, quickly, um, and uh, what settings work best with your camera. Now, I'm not going to speak as an expert regarding DSLRs. I will just relay what I have heard and read. Um, the faster the shutter speed, the, fa the better your image stabilization will be. Uh, it is generally recommended to be 1 one twentieth of a second on your shutter speed so the images are less blurry, so they'll be stabilized. Uh, I've also read and heard that it does not, does not matter on the frame rate, uh, whether it's 60 or 30 or you know, 100 frames a second. Second, that does not matter. Um, I'm not sure that that's actually the case. I have found that it does seem to matter. The higher the frame rate, and it would stand the reason, the more data you have, especially if you're moving really quickly or you have a really jerky scene um, where your camera's moving a lot, you're not going to shift uh, from one frame to the next such a huge distance if you've got more frames, and in theory, it should stabilize better. Uh, everything I've been told and read says that's not the case. That all that matters is the shutter speed. However, my own personal experience has said otherwise. The better the frame rate also has an impact on the quality of the stabilization. I do all my filming with a GoPro. You cannot set the shutter speed on a GoPro. So how do you get around this? By going a higher frame rate, higher frames per second, you're going to ensure the shutter speed on the GoPro will be at least the speed of the frames per second unless you have auto light mode on where it will then double up uh, if it gets low light. So you want to turn auto light mode off to ensure that you're getting a higher shutter speed on the GoPro. Uh, I have found a significant improvement of recording at 47 frames per second and up compared to 30 frames per second. The lower frame rates are just terrible. Again, that could be because the GoPro uh, may keep the shutter open a little longer to get a little more light in. However, I do not believe it's entirely the case for all of it. I do strongly feel that having more frames per second also increases the quality of the image stabilization. <coughs> Here's what I base that on. I can take a video that is recorded at 47 frames a second and stabilize it. Then I can take that same video, convert it to 30 frames a second, and stabilize that. The video that has been converted to 30 frames a second still have just as clear images. They aren't blurry because it's the same footage as the 47 frames per second. There's just less frames. The video that has 30 frames a second will not stabilize as well as the one with 30, 47. So. That's my experience with it, and that's why I do still think, regardless of what others say, having more frames per second also improves stabilization. It could be wrong, but for me, I found it works. So, being as I use a GoPro, I will tell you what I use is at least 1440, 1920 by 1440 at 47 frames a second, or if I'm in 1080, I, I go 60 frames a second. Um, and uh, that has worked really well for me once I started making those changeovers. Now, that's, that's enough for that technical aspect of it. But now how to get it done in an efficient workflow that doesn't waste a lot of time and makes full use of your CPU. Okay. So, again, the important thing is to keep in mind, like I said, uh, you want to keep the video footage in the right frames per second. In other words, if you recorded, if you want to make a final video that's 30 frames a second, you're not going to want to dump all your footage, even if it's the right resolution and your stabilizer will run on it because it's the right resolution. You don't want to dump all your clips into a 30 frame per second sequence because the stabilization has, for me, been worse than doing that. You will want to make 
sequences for each of your formats. If you've got some video that's in 1080 at 60 frames a second, you're going to make a sequence to store all that footage. you got a, uh, some footage at uh, uh, 1440 at 47 frames per second, you're going to make a sequence to store all that footage. So what I generally do is I open it up. Now, in this particular thing, I only had one, and it was by accident, one recording that was at 1080. Everything else is 1440. Um, so what I usually do is I just pull all my, dump all my sequences in here, my, my clips into here, and then <clears throat> I sort by size. Now, depending on if you did a lot of speed changes, like say you had a bunch of 1080s at 60 and a bunch of 1080s at 100, I think that was the next speed up, and a bunch of 1080s at 30, <clears throat> which I would avoid, recommend again, avoiding 30 frames a second, but say you did, you're going to make sequences for each of those. So again, if you have uh, a bunch of sequences at uh, 1080 at 60 frames a second and 1080 at 30 frames a second, and sequences that are 1440 at 47 frames a second, and some sequences that are 2.7 at 30 frames a second, I mean clips, I'm sorry, clips, you're going to want to make sequences to hold all the clips that are alike in those sequences. Now in my case, I only have one clip that's an oddball here. But I would just sort it by this. Um, if you had more of a difference of speed, you could sort by, by the frame per second instead. But the point is, you would group all the sequences that are together, you know, like say, you know, all these are 1440. Uh, I would select them all and create a new sequence from these clips. And then if we have a group of all the ones that are 1080. Uh, at 60 frames a second, I'd select all them, put them into a sequence. Every one of them is separate. Yes, that does mean I have to put them all back in the right order when I go to the final timeline, but you'll find it's not that hard. It's worth it to get the better stabilization. So once you've done that and you've created all your sequences, in my case, we're going to just go with one sequence because this was just an accident. I'm going to be too lazy to do it separately. <coughs> um, the next thing you'll do is just basic editing. You go through. Watch the video, get rid of all the stuff you don't want. That's the next important step. One, you want to have many separate clips. Shorter clips will stabilize better. Um, you can get better results. This is a way to do it without being ridiculous. You just make it instead of saying, oh, I got to get this, this little clip this long and this little clip this long so I can get the best stabilization. You don't need to be that extreme about it. Um, but as a, as a rule, you don't want to stabilize footage you're not going to use anyway. Why waste your time with it? So what I do is I go through all my footage and I start watching it. And everywhere I see somewhere I don't want, I cut it and you know delete what I don't want, throw it away. And so I end up with all these little clips. And so, you know, and then I just throw it away. So, so I'd right click on it, and, you know, you would say ripple delete, get rid of it. And again, that's that's what I do. I, I just go through and clip out everything that's junk and throw it away. That's the next step. Now you've got all these smaller clips. Now, many of you reported that, well, how do you make it use your full CPU? How do you make it process faster? So it doesn't seem to be, it's really slow. It's, it's, you know, it's really easy to make it use your full CPU by warp stabilizing more than one clip at a time. So I've broken all these clips down. I have an eight, uh, four core processor. Each core can do two threads. So I use that rule, two threads for each core. That means I do not want to warp stabilize more than two, two clips for each core. So four core processor, I stabilize in groups of eight. So I would then go in here, I would select what I need to stabilize, and I'm not going to do it here because I've already got a bunch of stabilizing and my process is being really used up right at the moment. But I would select eight clips, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, close enough. You can give or take, um, but I'd select, you know, you really don't want to get too much. You will, like, make your computer totally freeze up and, and die if you selected, a, you know, 100 clips and told it to, to start warp stabilizing because it literally will do them all at the same time and it will use all the threads on your CPU, on your processors. So I select them and I drop the clips in 
and wham, now they're all ready to get stabilized. Now, again, I didn't want to do that yet because I've already got a bunch of stabilizing. <clears throat> so let's pretend that's these here. So we've got, oh, it looks like it's got a bunch done, actually. Um, oh, there they are. So we've got uh, these clips that are, are being analyzed. So then I go through and say I have eight clips being analyzed. Actually, they may be about done. You know what? I can show you. Because... So I've just got these clips. So what I would do is I would select, let's see if these are done. That one's done. That one's done. I don't like these. So I would go through and I'm going to start here on this one. And again, you do not want to select more than uh, two clips per each core, you uh, each uh, core you have in your CPU. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to select less because I have those two other threads going. So I'm going to go and select a little like right from here. So I drop the warp stabilizer into it. Wham. Now it's actually doing this. And there we go. Look at that. 0% idle. I am making full use of my CPU. Uh, Premiere Pro down here, you can see it at the bottom of the screen, 630%, 700%. So this is how you can get Premiere Pro now to be doing more than just one clip and spending forever doing it. Um, so while it's going through all those to save time, the next thing I wanna do is I know all these clips I was walking in. Um, so let me first tell you how, uh, well, the, the next thing I want to do is I want to preserve the scale. Um, it's this little checkbox here, preserve scale. Just use it. Um, with the warp stabilizer, with any stabilizer, it can use, it can zoom in and out of the image rather than cropping it um, to, to preserve the scale. Uh, the issue I would see with that is the more you move, the more it looks like distortion. And so it just works better, you know, just just preserve the scale and be done with it and, and not add an extra variable that could potentially make your video look funky. Um, so again, I preserve the scale. Um, and wham, I just do that on all the ones I just selected so that when it gets done, uh, and it actually does the stabilization part that's after the analyzing part, um, otherwise it's good to scale preserved. The other thing they talk about is the smoothness. Now I do the smoothness in steps, 50% um, of the last value. So for me, one step from 50 would be 25. The next step from 25, I do 12. The next step from 12, I do six, then the one. So I do the steps at, at I cut the value in half. So I go 50 to 25 to 12 to 6 to 3 to 1. And when I talk through the rest of this, I'm referring to each of that jump as one step. So when I go from 50 to 25, I'm referring to that as one step. If I go from 50 to 12, I'm going to refer to that as two steps. So I'm skipping right from 50 to 12 and not trying 25. So this is what I use as a rule. Um, to, to expedite my video editing. So 50 and 25 you are going to find only really work if you're standing still and you're filming like a picture on a wall and your hand was just a little bit of motion <clears throat> and you know you just want to kind of just clean that up. That's where 50 and 25 will come in. If you're walking, you're panning the camera or anything like that, 50 and 25 are not going to work for you. You're going to see warping. It's just not going to work. So what I do is before even finished analyzing all this is I check these and I know all these tracks are walking. So I will set them. I will just cut to the chase and start at 12. 